The End Times Beloved one, I would speak with you now about what have been called the latter days, the end times. To you such labeling has a bit of foreboding to it, does it not, the end times? For the end times have been spoken of as a time of doom, a time of judgment. I would suggest unto you, if you will receive it, that the day of judgment is past. For long enough has the holy child lived in judgment of self and others. You have known well the day of judgment. Now you are calling forth a new paradigm in the understanding of ascension. Whenever you are in judgment of self or others, you are still accepting the habitual historical perspective that one could be less than perfect, less than holy, and that there would still be something that needed to be perfected. Allow the day of judgment to be passed, completed. It is not something that you would see as a future time, for indeed you have lived with the day of judgment many days in this lifetime and all of the days of other lifetimes. Allow yourself now to choose for ascension. The end times. For some they will be seen as a time of judgment, a time of doom, for they hold yet the image of themselves as unworthy, feeling that there must be struggle, that there must be payment in order to know the love of the Father. There are some who will come home to the Father through much of hardship, much of sorrow, much of conflict, because that is how they have decreed they will be purified and worthy. The Father has not decreed that they must go through the challenges, for the Father sees his child as perfect and lovable from before time began. Lovable because you are the creation of love. You are the love that you would seek. Now we may speak of the end times as a time of joy. It is a time of ending limited belief about self and others, limited understanding of what the world is for. The world is not a place where you have to learn lessons, where you have to come through sorrow and suffering. In truth, you have brought forth the world as your playground, to play in joy. But as you would see even now, the small ones, as they play in the sandbox together, they do not always play in joy, do they? And neither have you. That is not said in judgment. You have chosen the experience both sides of the coin, having accepted the collective belief in duality, which is a shared belief upon this plane, the belief that there is good and that there is evil that there is an opposing force and that there are all gradations of value between good and evil. You have said that you will experience both sides of the coin. Now, in truth, the coin is one. It is whole, but there is yet held the belief that there are the two sides. So there will be many of the brothers and sisters who look upon the end times with fear, for they fear that they will be judged and found wanting, and they are hoping that there will be a merciful Savior who will come down from the cloud somehow, take them to the Father. In truth, there will be a merciful Savior who will take you to the Father, but it is not I as a separate being. I cannot save you. In truth, you do not even need saving. You are holy already and perfect from before we brought forth the concept of time, but the Savior will be the enlightenment of you. It may seem to be an embodiment, perhaps, of the light that you are, and it will come from a higher perspective, that it could be seen to come from the cloud somewhere. It is symbolic. You are your own Savior, and you are in the process of ascending to the Father. The end times are times of great joy. Allow yourself to claim happiness, upliftment, to live the ascension and to spread the gospel. For you will meet many of the brothers and sisters who are ready to speak of Judgment Day and to ask you if you are saved. And you will speak unto these ones who ask of you if you are saved. Yes, for indeed you are saved. And do you accept Jesus as your personal Savior? And you may say, yes, to that as well. For I am not separate from you. I am very personal. As you are your own Savior, you may claim me as your Savior, knowing that we are one. For when I said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, it was not a promise, but a statement of a great truth. For I am one with you as the holy child of our Father. It cannot be otherwise. And I am with you always and forever, precisely under the end of the world which believes in separation, when you will know, truly know, that we are one. I and the Father are one, as you and the Father are one. That is what I meant by, even unto the end of the world. For at the end of the world, belief in separation, upon which threshold you now stand, there will be the grand awakening and the recognition of holiness, the wholeness of one. For if you are life, and I assure you that you are, you are the energy of the Father come into expression. And as you allow yourself to claim the expansion that is truly you, 
known as love, you come home in great joy. The end times are upon you, and they are times of joy, as you so choose. Now, there have been many prophecies about the end time. You have heard prophecies that ones will come in my name, and that you must be more wary. I would suggest unto you that all those who come in my name are your servant. For indeed you have called them forth. And you have heard brothers and sisters saying that perhaps one particular teacher is better than another one. You have seen repeatedly the evidence of the belief in separation, where one will say, in a variety of subtle or not so subtle ways, My teacher is better than your teacher, and will foster feelings of competition. All teachers come because you call them forth. All teachers have a gift to share with you. That is why you have asked them to be within your consciousness, within your awareness of life experience. All teachers have gifts. Allow yourself to feel at peace with everyone who comes to share with you their gift. Take from what they share what feels in alignment with your heart, and allow the rest of it to be given to someone else. Do not abide in conflict or in judgment, for that keeps you in a place of constriction. It does not allow you to see the true value of the gift. But if what they speak is not the truth of your heart, then you may walk on. For indeed you will find others who will speak the truth of your heart, and the ones who have spoken what is not at your place of resonance have also given you a great gift, because they have allowed you to call forth the clarity of your own heart to assess what your truth is. That is why you have asked them to be with you. It is much as you would ask one to set forth a great smorgasbord for you. It does not mean that you are going to eat of everything, including the Brussels sprouts and the spinach, or you may, but it has been offered for your choice. Be at peace with all of your teachers, for indeed by their fruits you will know them. For if what they give as a gift allows peace in the heart, unconditional love, and acknowledgement of each one as the holy child, then you will know where their heart is. If they bring forth fear, judgment of others, the separation of competition, then you will want to assess that and see if that is your truth, and if it is your truth, abide with it. In other words, allow everyone their path, allow everyone their journey, for indeed everyone is on the journey home. But choose you well whom you will serve, not because your Father is going to judge you and to send you off to a place of great fires but because you are the one who has to live with that experience of your choice. It is as simple as that, you see. No great complexity. You have decreed that these are end times because you desire now to know joy, to know love, to know the Father and to come home in the full realization, even while activating the body, even while having experience upon this plane. The end times are times of great celebration, times, as you have decreed, perhaps, of the exams, because you have asked of yourself to know, how am I doing? So you have set yourself in this lifetime some of the tests, you will call them, some of the mile markers in order to know. How am I doing with this? In any moment you can ask of yourself and receive information as to how you are doing. For if you feel at peace with self, if you feel in love with the one who stands before you, if you feel in love with life, if you feel expanded even to the place of angenic realm, then you are knowing ascension. If you feel in constriction, in doubt, in worry, in judgment of self, that is okay. For as you become aware of where you are abiding, then you have opportunity to change, to choose anew. Belief has brought forth all that you experience. Belief now is expanding into the possibility that you can know ascension, that you can know the magic without having to suffer and to make yourself more worthy. Belief now in this age is allowing the Holy Child to play with unlimited concepts and to say that, I know I live and move and have my being in more realms than just this one. And you bring forth the writing and the videos of imagination. You are bringing forth a great acceleration of technology that serves you, that allows the one mind to be in communication with itself no matter how far removed you would see the other part of it to be. You are bringing forth a technology that will measure the energy of spirit. Already you can do that. You can put it upon the photographic plate and have a picture of the energy. You are bringing forth technology to know healing of the body, to be able to bring forth healing in ways that are instant. Now I am speaking here of technology, but I am also speaking of the ancient methods where you have known that there does not need to be a utilization of mechanical equipment, as you call it, in order to effect healing. You are bringing forth remembrance now that you are the energy, and as you would facilitate for another the remembrance of energy, instantly there is wholeness. 
For indeed, time is a construct in this point of belief, and as you are willing to play with the possibility that time does not have to be a long process, you bring forth instantaneous healing, measured even within the concept of time as being instant, for that is still within the belief system based upon concept of time. The ascension which you will be bringing forth is the acceleration, still within time, of the particles of light which will be seen to merge into a great ray of light, and you will ascend. The form, the body, can then be remanifest as you desire. Now as I speak these words, there is a place of relevancy within you. In other words, you say, yes, I can imagine that. I don't know how to do it, but I can imagine it. I know it as a possibility. If you will receive it, all that you can imagine, all that you can accept as possibility, is already reality. You have yet what you call a delay process which holds it in the future, but it is a reality that you know. Otherwise, I would be speaking words which would sound have no meaning, but there is meaning even though at this point in time, as you see time to be, you see ascension and remanifestation of the body as a future possibility. Now after my ascension, which is recorded in your holy scripture, I ascended unto the right hand of our Father. For indeed I never left, as you have never left, the right hand, the left hand, the lap of our Father. Did I remanifest my body and come back again to what you would see as his plane? Yes. That is not recorded in the usual scripture. You have writings which speak about the rest of the lifetime, which is still ongoing, by the way, writings which describe how I came back and was amongst you. I lived, I traveled, I had family, I knew you. I did not ascend and go off afar somewhere where I could not be reached again except through intercessory prayer. That was a great complexity thought up by my holy child, wanting to have some temporal power, desiring to have brothers and sisters believe that perhaps this one of the holy child, known as a priest, priestess, was a bit more in touch with our father than they could ever be. Therefore, whatever revelations were received by that priest or priestess were of more value than what you received. It was a simply a great untruth. But the belief was bought, and the price was a bit dear. And now you have taken it back to the store and exchanged it for a better gift. For truly, after the ascension which is recorded in your holy scripture, I came back and was amongst you for all that you would see as your lifetime in that time, and there was much that was shared. Verily, I did not have to just come back what you would see as three years with you. I came back to share the joy of the Father with you. I came to show you that the body is the manifestation of the Spirit, and that it is possible for one laid on the body to have it dead and buried, even consumed by the energy of fire, and it can be remanifest. These are times when you will see the happening again. Already you feel the presence of ones who have laid down the body, and you do not perhaps see the form, but you feel their presence. They speak to you, and you speak with them. Sometimes you have thought you were just imagining it, but I would ask of you, what has occasioned the thought when you have thought of them? In other words, you may be doing something as mundane as the daily activities of washing dishes, taking a shower, driving the vehicle. All of a sudden you will think upon this one. It is because they are knocking upon the door of your mind and heart and desire and acknowledgement. They are very much with you, for as you are all and they are all, they cannot go off somewhere where you would not be. As there has been a desire of your heart to know communication, communion again with that one, that one desires it as much as you do. For I will share with you, to have a belief system where you would say that when the body is laid down, that is, the end of the presence and the communication, is even more frustrating to the one who has laid down the body than it is for you. For they want to be acknowledged. They are still alive, sometimes much to their surprise, and they want to be acknowledged. They want to be spoken to. They want to be included in your daily experience. And they call to you with great, great love and say, Please do not shut me out. And you, because of a certain belief, respond, That cannot be. I saw the body in the box. I saw the ashes of that body in the small cigar box. And I know that one is gone from me, and I mourn the loss. And all the while that one is standing right next to you and saying, See me, hear me, please. Now in the time of ascension you will be knowing yourself as a light in the presence of light, spirit, which is very much one with the others who are all around you. And you will walk through them as they walk through you. Now that is a thought to ponder. 
you are upon the threshold of a time of ascension, a time of great joy, end times, when there will be many messages and prophecies. Already you have them recorded in your Holy Scripture. Already you have the brothers and sisters most willing to share with you the other prophecies. Already you have the masters who are coming to share with you messages of the end times, and all of them come because you have called them forth. They do not come to trip you up. They do not come to bring dark forces upon this plane. For too long there has been belief in dark forces. Do you know what dark force is? It is only the absence of the awareness. The awareness of light. There is no force outside of you. There is no force that is going to overtake you and put you in a darkness forever and ever. For indeed you are of your own making, having experienced enough lifetimes of feeling in darkness. And where are you now? In other words, those lifetimes did not devastate you, did not put you in a place of the void where you were lost forever and ever. You are here right now with the hope, the possibility, the probability, the reality of unlimited light and joy. That is where you stand right now. So when one speaks to you of the possibility of evil forces, you may smile and say, No, I've played that role. I know that role. Yes, I can relate to it. And perhaps there is a feeling of fear that will come up as ones would speak of the possibility of evil force, because you have already experienced it. Otherwise, it would be as the computer language it does not compute. But you have been there. You have experienced the time of darkness that you have brought upon yourself. You have experienced times of energy that seemed to be so powerful the light would be almost extinguished. You have brought forth in your experience times when you have used the energy of spirit in such a forceful way that others felt a great motivation to lay down the body. As we have spoken, you cannot take from another one their form, their body. It is always a choice to release the body. But there can be seen to be great motivation to make the choice to release the body, and you have used the power of spirit in such a way as to give motivation to brothers and sisters to do lay down the body. You have been as the laser, the great laser beam that could split the crystal. You have used the power of spirit in most devastating ways, according to the judgment of ones on the other end of it, and you have been at the other end of it, so you would know the possibility of fear. So when ones would speak to you of the possibility of dark forces of evil, there is a certain feeling that comes up to meet it, a feeling of relevancy which says, Yes, this is not beyond anything I can imagine. I can imagine this. But know you well that you have already completed that script. You are free now to choose for love. The end times are upon you. The prophecies, there will be many. There will be as many as there are brothers and sisters. There will be some seen as authorities because you have held them in a place of authority, although indeed they are your equal. But you have said, Well, perhaps they know a bit more. Perhaps they are already ascended, therefore they must know a bit more than I do. As we have spoken, you have already ascended. Otherwise, you would not understand what I am speaking of. But you have yet the belief in process which says it will be in the future. So even the ascended masters are no more wise than you. The ascended masters, if you will receive it, have their own perspective, and they will give you their message from their perspective. For indeed, what you call forth is still within the context of the belief system that you have agreed upon. So even as you would see ascended masters to be all wise and way above you, it is still part of the adventure, the experience of the holy child, and even the concept of ascended masters is a construct of the belief system. Therefore, when you receive messages from ascended masters, from guides, from teachers, from loved ones even, allow yourself to sit in the place of the heart and to breathe. For indeed, some messages may come as a bolt of lightning out of the sky and may strike a place of fear with instant reaction, because you know it well. It is most important to take the deep breath and then to return again unto the place of peace, the place of the heart, and to ask, Is this truth for me? You, as the holy child, the collective brothers and sisters, are calling forth many messages. It is a time of information explosion. And this information is coming from many, many avenues and many, many channels, because you have said, I will know my truth. So ones will come and give you great opportunity to arrive at a place of clarity, a place of knowing. This is a time of sifting for you, of sifting the wheat from the chaff. Not judging the chaff, but just letting it go and taking to yourself the kernel of truth. It is a time of harvest. 
It is a time when you are harvesting yourself. It is a time when you and many of the brothers and sisters will be willing to ascend and to be harvested, if you will use that analogy. Others will desire to stay within a certain belief system until they know completion with it. After the harvest, will you still know experience? Of course. Will you know experiences upon this plane, our Holy Mother the Earth? Yes, if you so desire. Or you may say, I want to try another expression. Then you will bring conscious focus of attention to that experience. The end times. The end of an age. The end of the age of the belief that there could be separation from all that our Father is. Long enough have you nurtured your experience within the petri dish of separation. Now dawns the age, the time of ascension. <laughs>